So we're gonna keep it simple. I've been playing Biken since uh, the season pass release on PS4. Break it down for the new the newbies, right? Pros and cons, how good I think she is right now, uh, moves and what they do, and a quick combo overview all in a nice little package. So pros and cons. So pros, I think her mid range is really good. She has uh, really good buttons for mid range, like this and this and this. And also this, it's kind of close range though. And she also has this move, Kabari, which is disjointed and it deals with a lot of stuff. Uh, she is a character that is actually allowed to retreat because of an air tatami, which is really nice. Her damage is pretty high also. Uh, it is Guilty Gear Strive, but uh, her damage feels quite high. Like sometimes when I'm doing combos, I'm like, man, I did all this damage for what? Meter gain feels okay. She doesn't have a good defense modifier is the way I want to put it. Uh, she has a lot of guts, so ends up evening out. And she has a unique defensive mechanic that other people don't have in the parry. Now, the downsides are, if, going back to the parry, this move is not that easy to use, but I'll uh, give you a couple of tips on how to use this move. Uh, overall, her defense is like, outside of uh, this, defensive-wise, she's okay. Uh, one big problem that she has is, at her best range, which is here, she doesn't always get to convert into combos. Uh, which I'll go into later. It's probably like one of her absolute biggest problems. And then another one would be that the way that her pressure is structured, it, you need to do a lot of guessing. Uh, we call it RPS, rock, paper, scissors. You need to do a lot of guessing where if you're right, the return is high, but if you're wrong, the punishment is high. Which leads into how good do I think she is? I think she is good, not top tier. It doesn't feel like top tier. It doesn't feel like pay to win broken middle-ish slightly better than middle-ish of the pack for now we'll see how she goes the good news also is that she's pretty easy to pick up she's probably the easiest to pick up dlc character i think like i think gold lewis is easy but his matchups are really really hard to learn how to play and then jackal and happy chaos are just really really fucking unique characters where she's pretty basic she's pretty basic she's the first dlc character that i played where within like 30 minutes or so, I was ready to go play, where um, all the others, I needed either like an hour or two, or in Happy Chaos, I needed like uh, like a day before I started playing people. Cool. I'm gonna give a move overview, but I'm gonna do it my way, which, in which, if for some reason I don't mention a move or something, it's probably because it's not important. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real. So we're gonna start with punches. So for 5P, so this is a good move and a not good move at the same time. So what's good about it is that it hits crouchers, it's five frames. It has some like matchup specific stuff that is uh, really helpful. Like it's helpful against Zato, against Pierce, for example. Now the downside is for the most part, because the range is so small, there's a range where this happens and that fucking sucks. Cause you, here you basically don't get to combo like at all. But that's your move for uh, like mashing out of pressure, protecting you from throws and stuff. So that that is like a big uh, problem. So uh, here's a two ping, same type of move, but six frames. And it basically has the same thing as a, uh, let me try to get a little bit closer. But you have this type of issue. Now, the nice thing about both of them is that they're mashable. So you can use that in your pressure to help var uh, vary your pressure a little bit. And then, then you have six ping, it's an anti air. It has good range. Um. And it has fast invincibility as well. This is your main go-to anti-air. A lot of people say her anti-air is not good, but I disagree. I think her anti-air is just different. Like there are other characters where you can just press the anti-air button over and over and over, where her, you need to pick the right anti-air for the right situation. Some situations you use this, some situations you have to meet them air versus air. Uh, one example, you have a couple, actually a couple moves you could use, but I want to stay in uh, with punches. If, you, if I want to stay in the same lane as a uh, 6P, like what you would use for anti-air, your air versus air would be JK or JD. So JD, it should be pretty clear why you would use this air versus air. JK, you use for when people are above you, as you can see by her stanky leg, okay? You know, I'm just gonna stay and, and uh, jump in some already here, but uh, this is your general jump in, JS, as you can see, uh, it reaches down. And you have jump heavy, which uh, is super, super active. And it's one of your main jumpins, okay? So <laughs> we'll go back to ground moves. I kind of did that fucked up, but hey. So we're going to go to kicks. So you have 2k. This is one of your low options. Uh, let me disappear for a second. Okay. So it's a fast low. Uh, it's one of the things you'll be using for mix-ups and for pressure. One thing that's good about it is the range is pretty good. So let me disappear again. 
Standing 5k. One thing that's really good about this move. Let me disappear once again. I should just not be here, but... The main downside about this is that it's not fast. It's 7 frames. Uh, then you have your 6k, which is your break down the door attack. The 6k. It's similar to the 5k in that uh, it's hard for lows to hit this move. The difference is though, it travels pretty far. Uh, it's extremely active. This should be your go-to button for beating throws, by the way, is 6k. She has a, a, a few tools, but if you need like an easy uh, one out off a of random situation, I really recommend 6k. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in older versions of Guilty Gear, it, her old 6k was throw invincible, so I think her uh, 6k in this version being so active is kind of a throwback to that. Because the main way you beat throws in this game is by using heavy, heavy, heavy active moves. This move, this move is really, 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 really good. Slashes. Now we get to have fun. Slashes. So, far slash. 10 frame. Pretty big move here. Pretty straightforward in its application as well. Relatively low total duration, as you can see as well. Uh, and her 2S, which is also relatively low total duration. Not a low. And her 2S is bigger than her far slash. Now, we go into one of the bigger issues with Biken. So, the big one being that... Her, both her far slash and her two slash are only con uh, you can only convert them if you hit uh, a croucher or you get a counter hit, which is a big deal because she her buttons are good in this range, but she doesn't get return off them, which is a, an odd choice. Uh, as opposed to someone like Nagoto Yuki who does 2s, 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 and he hits your 2s and he does Beyblade, it just gets a big combo, right? These buttons are really good, these are esports buttons, frankly. But the main thing from them being lowercase e, capital S ports, is that you don't combo off them all the time. They have to be crouching or it has to be counter hit. Now, if I want to quickly go back to JS, this move is fucking esports too, and you almost always get combos off this. The main time you don't get a combo is if you're retreating with JS and they run into it. Uh, for the most part, it seems like you can't combo off that situation. So now, uh, heavy. Her heavy buttons are actually pretty good. She has 5H and 6H. So, uh, you will mostly see these in combos, but 5H actually has some neutral applications in a few places. Uh, mostly because, first of all, both of these buttons are disjoints, but this move is disjoint and it's relatively low total duration. So again, total duration uh, from the first frame of startup to the last frame of recovery. So relatively low total duration and the return on both of these buttons are really huge. Ideally, there are some matchups like versus Eno where you use this button a lot. Uh, 6H is mostly like, let's say they're here and you're bullying, so you want to bully with this. This is all is disjoint, right? And for punishing DPs, both of them. Now, 2H is definitely an esports button. Uh, I, I will disappear once again. So it is a very long range low that uh, you basically always leads into a knockdown. Really good. Who the fuck's calling me? Not important. So we have Tatami Gaishin. Air Tatami Gaishi, Yo Zansen, Kabari. That's our Tatami Gaishi. So, Tatami Gaishi has two versions, ground and air, as I said. They're different. So, the ground version is two hits. There is a stomp hit, and there is the Tatami itself. The air version just has the Tatami. So, for using the air version, you generally want to use it retreating or falling like this. You don't really want to use it moving forward because you can see Biken lands before the tatami, which means there's a very vulnerable point where she can be hit before the tatami hits the ground to protect you. If you go backwards, this is the case as well, but she'll be moving away, so the tatami will be there to protect you. Now the ground one, you mostly use this in pressure and to kill projectiles. So as an example, let's use Milia's to hit H-Disc. Uh, so other moves like Kai's uh, H Stun Edge, uh, Gun Flame, these all get deleted right, by the ground Tatami Gaishi. For, as a side note, one thing you have to be careful of is if you choose to use this in pressure, you need to make sure that for the most part, you have both of these hits hitting. So if you do something like this, let's do it like this. There you go. So if you get something like this, uh, you are extremely vulnerable, so be careful. There it is. It can be hard to judge originally, but the more you play her and the more you play against her, the easier this will be to see, okay? So next is gonna be Yozansen. So this move is fucking nuts. So uh, 
Is it safe to say this is the best version of Yozansen, like, ever, maybe? Maybe? This move's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, this is an air move. It's 236S. It used to be a DP motion, but now it's 236S. And this is your instant overhead slash mix-up tool slash jump in slash anti-air slash cross up slash get out of the corner basically it does a lot of shit okay <laughs> this move is a jack of all trades type of move you use this for a lot of stuff so first let's talk about offense and mix up one would be you can use it as an instant overhead it's very 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 fast as a side note there's two ways of inputting this you can do it the old school way and do two three six nine so that's quarter circle forward and an up and an s Either up forward or up whatever or you can hold up or up forward and then do two three six now the second one is better on hit slightly than the first one but the main time you're going to be doing this input is doing rc slowdown where you can buffer it or after a button and the way you do this is the way the game accepts inputs you can quickly do it when you do the move previously you tap nine and quickly do two three six that's how you get the fast one uh, if you're doing it randomly, then you should use the 2369 version. If you played fighting games for a while, it might be weird thinking of doing a tiger knee motion by holding up first and then doing the core circle, but you get used to it after a couple of days. If you've never played a fighting game before, then congrats, it's going to be way easier for you. <laughs> it's going to be a lot easier for you to do this. It took me days to do it the other way. Like, legit, it took me days to do it the other way. Now, another way you could use this is to get out of the corner. So... Biken has a decently long air dash, and if you combine this with Yozansen, not only are you traveling, but you're protecting yourself with a hitbox. Because that this move legit hits all around, all around her, and the the easiest way i found to call this out is to meet her Eversir. Like, if she's already over you and doing it, it's probably too late, and you have to try to uh, snipe her landing. Now, another thing you can use this for is, as an anti-air, in case people are floating really high above you. There you go. There will be cases where you can uh, anti-air somebody, you get a counter hit uh, against a move that's normally pretty hard to anti-air where you get like really high return. The last practical common use for this move So the main thing is that she's plus. Can't even jump. And then if you mash, if they if they mash in there, you get a fucking combo. 6P? No. Grab no way. Yeah, yes, so you're correct. You have to do this really deep to be plus. So my recommendation is to really grind this out because it's really, really important. Because it makes her air dash super, super, super strong. It makes it so that you could do uh like IDJS, and if they're just not ready to anti-air you, you're just in. You need to you need to keep practicing. This is really really important, and uh, it's very very helpful. And if you catch them like randomly, like let's say backdashing, you will get a combo off it too. So then last is going to be uh, Kabari. Uh, so S and H. So let's talk about the easier one first. So H. Okay, so this move is disjointed. It's pretty fast. Minus three has a follow up. You can delay and has another follow-up that goes through. The follow-up that goes through, you can use it for mix-ups, but the more common use is in case they are mashing buttons. So in case you were like, what the fuck is the point of this move? Okay. Where the other one, you get a hit here. But the one that's in front has a couple of weaknesses. So one is it loses to 6P for free. It also can be thrown. Actually, both can be thrown. Speaking of which, uh, if you have a three frame move, you can even stop the one that goes through you, right? Yep. So Lord Soul can always hit it. It's about three frame gap, right? But the good news is for you is if they choose to do reversals, smoked. But the bad news is there's actually another thing that is really, really strong against this. Let's get, let's get the durag out. The smile, please. No, it can't. I can't do it. I'll do it after I'm done. We're in content mode. We're in content mode. After, after, after. I don't want to lose my my train of thought. 
I want to run that so bad. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. Soon, soon. Thank you, though. Thank you. Oh, he's already on it. So, <clears throat> anyway. Okay. So, first of all, there's clear responses to this. So, this move is definitely not overpowered. And if you choose to use this move in pressure, because this is like her safe pressure ender, you need to build strategies for each character. So, what do I mean? So, Axel, for example, he has the low profile 2K, right? Low profile 2K. You, his, his in particular, you can't even get past his. Like, Jacko, you can get past hers, but you can't get past Axel. So what do you do? You have the big brain one, which is you do this. Or you kind of got to hold that. <laughs> you kind of got to hold that. This move is five frames, so you got to either hold that, back off, whatever. You need to make specific strategies depending on what character you're playing, depending on what uh, answers they have to this. And if you are willing to take the risk to take certain risks, then just be prepared for if you're wrong, you're gonna take damage. But if you're right, you're gonna do a lot of damage. Not all characters can just go under this move. Characters who try to 6P, uh, you have responses to. So someone asked about this in the chat. What do you do about 6P? There's two nice answers for 6P. One is you just wait and you delete them. One way to do it, or you can use the H follow-up. But you need to vary your options and Keep a good read on your opponent's defense to use this move well. Throw doesn't win because throw loses to a couple things. You just doing a different button or you waiting. Throw beats other stuff. You have to plan for your opponent's character and read your opponent. So you need to know what your opponent can do against this move and then try to counter it really well. Now, uh, S Kabadi is pretty interesting. So this is a uh, combo tool and mixo tool. This move is slower than the H one. The H one is quite fast. This move is slower, but it's zero on block. Uh, the tether lasts for, I believe, five seconds. And I think it changes if you pull on it. So what the pull means is like, if you do something that will force you to each other. So for throw, she has a mix up she could do. You could do this style one or uh, this to stay on the same side. It's nice, easy throw mix up in mid screen where you do super jump forward or super jump back uh people can practice against this one though she has more stuff that i'm looking into by the way but this is basically where s comedy comes into play really is for mix ups and uh for punishes punish combos quick example you, you have definitely seen this probably there you go so you use these a lot, you, you mainly use it for that. Now, some people kind of just do it and then they try to force the, the point blank situation. Keep in mind too, that your opponent will also get special situations when they're tethered to you. And if they do their due diligence, they should have this prepared, so be careful. Combos, woo, combos. Combos and some basic setup uh, explanations. So your main BNB, the main one that you will be aiming for, but you're not gonna get too much, unfortunately. BNB. Now, the, the, the main reason why this is your b, &B besides it is your b, b is that this is also like the combo that will be your go-to when you don't know what to do. Now, one thing about Bunkin is that actually her combos are kind of position, position specific and everyone's kind of doing different stuff. So I'm just going to be giving you my recommendations based on what I'm doing right now. Now, this type of conversion... You get mildly often. Now, if you're a little bit further, and let's talk about the range where she can't combo a lot. So like here, if you get a counter hit or they're crouching, you can convert off this into a nice simple knockdown. If for some reason you're at a range, see how you don't get that? So if you don't feel like you can connect something after your tatami, it's fine for you to just end the combo and do a safe job with uh, IADJH, totally, totally fine. No one's gonna fault you for that. Most of what you're gonna end up doing combo-wise, uh, a lot of her big cash outs are in the corner, off counter hits, or with meter. Side note, try not to do this. And if you're gonna match 2K or use 2K as a starter, or even 5K as a starter, uh, always try to go into 6K. 
don't go into sweep in case uh, your first hit of tatami whiffs and you get deleted. It will make your life a lot easier and you will get a lot less frustrated. Okay. So counter -air combos. So uh, I'll show you the one I just did before. This one off 6H, you can actually do the same thing off 2H as well. Okay. That and 6H is the same. 2H, you might have to walk forward a little bit or delay your close slash button so you can get the end. But on 6H, you don't have to do it. 6H, you can kind of just do it. For your other buttons, this or this, you actually end up just going to 2H into your BNB. So you're you're pretty Gucci there. If they jump, so let's jump. There's a couple ways you can go about this. Uh, I keep it pretty simple. I just delay uh, Kabari, H Kabari. I know some people do this, but to be honest, I haven't learned it. So <laughs> uh, at the moment, I still do this. It's a pretty easy confirm. It's pretty consistent. For corner combo, routing is pretty straightforward also. For the most part, if you're not doing something into this, you're going to be trying to launch and then you'll do some base of that. So this is a pretty simple routing that I like to use also because it makes all other routing way, 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 way easier. Way, way, way easier and way less to memorize. I know I used uh, close slash here, but like if you get like 2k, which you will definitely hit people 2k. Or if you get raw sweep, if, if, you, if you can't judge what to do. This is your friend. The the PP into Yozan San is your best friend if you don't know what to do. And that and I, I cop out into that like quite a bit actually. Or if you don't know what to do, you also do have old old faithful as well. Uh because I, I wanted to go into Yozan San and like Yozan San RC is something you're gonna be using a lot. Three routes. There's red RC, blue RC, and PRC. And you might be like, why would you do a different one? Like, what is the reason for using each one? PRC is like Red RC, but better. So when you're when you're new, you should start Red RC just because it's the easiest. But eventually, you should promote to PRC because it does slightly more damage, and you get the same follow up situation on block as Red RC straight up. BRC is for when they when your opponent has 50 meter as well, because then you stop them from using their defensive YRC. As far as priority of learning, I would say learn the Red RC combo first, then learn the PRC combo, then learn the BRC combo. Uh, there's a fast RC combo that does uh, as like an esports combo. It has a lot of damage, but the following situation, if they block it, is fine, but not as strong as PRC in my opinion. Yeah, the fast RC combo is super sick, but this shit, like that shit, is, that shit is dope. But I don't use it anymore, so you don't actually have to do this. You have to do okay, and then to put it together, that's red RC. Uh, there's a bunch of combos you can do on PRC. Okay, so either, either one is your fine. I usually use this. And then BRC. So if you notice, these combos are all basically the same combo, like the same idea that you're doing. You don't really have to change this for weight, because I don't, I didn't, the fast RC combo, you have to change for heavies, but uh, all these other ones, you can do them the same to basically everybody. Uh, and then one more RC combo for you in the corner. This is the... Uh, you can do this off a lot of stuff, but the most reliable time is off this. This is the main time you're going to use that combo. This combo does mad damage. There's other times you will use this, but the most often you will use this is after this if they get hit by that uh we'll talk a little bit about mid screen so this is going back to her conversions are spacing dependent so i'm gonna use yozan sen as an example but basically judgment is off is up to you like 
this is the round start position. So from here to like here, you can start getting into like converting into the corner combos. Where from in this range, you shouldn't think about it too much. I'm gonna use Yozan Sen to kind of like uh, show it off because Yozan Sen is a hit you'll get a lot mid screen that you'll be able to convert. Uh, I'll use BRC as an example. Now, the only reason why this is possible is I use the drift forward. If you use a, a drift in place, you will not reach the corner. Oh, poor, he barely reached the corner. Usually, you don't reach the corner. Then, red RC, if you choose to use red RC. Same type of idea. And then, PRC. So again, all really similar combos, and because of the way I'm routing it, like it's pretty consistent, pretty, pretty consistent. Uh, she has more advanced ways of doing this that you could learn over time. And I can show like one kind of funky example real quick. So, just keep these things in mind. As time goes on, I think people will tighten these up a little bit. It's up to you. You don't have to always go for like pushing towards the corner, but the more you play her, the better you'll get at judging how far away you are and how to like kind of improvise that. Because uh, that, that's like a classic Guilty Gear combo skill is like improvising your combos to get the most damage you can for the situation you're in, which you just takes some experience.